Diane Radikin is with us. Diane, good morning. Good morning to you guys. Good. So why don't you tell everybody the title of your book? The book's called YLA Pour Quapery. Uh, retails for twenty six ninety five, as does the ebook, And it's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Baker Taylor, MoMA in New York. A museum yeah. of Modern Art. Yeah, that, that's, that's for sure. Well, now Mama listen, means. tell us a bit about, uh, uh, you know, the word. Obviously, there's a French word in there. What is it? How is it pronounced? Pour quoi? Pour quoi. Pour it quoi. means why. It means it, why. But it's pronounced pour quoi. Right. Um, Taylor, you're there? I'm here. Okay. Well, I did some homework, and I saw that you wrote a book. I did. Yeah, and it was about... What, Say goodbye. I no, love it's goodbye. A, I love you goodbye. How to rid your life of toxic relatives and friends without using harmful pesticides. So it's a humorous self help book. Right. Mine's just the opposite, but it's not self help. It just makes you read. <laughs> it's self destruction. Two great cities. It was just about falling in love with both cities. Oh, wonderful. Oh, and those nice. are two good cities to fall in yes, love with, they too. Are. I, did. I did. And uh, How long did you live in Paris? I'm still living there. I oh, go back and wonderful. Forth. And, if, if you get to see the book, there's a picture of an airplane. I used to call I wanted to say Air France, but I couldn't, you know, I didn't want to advertise <laughs> it. Mm-hmm. I hear you. 66 goes right there, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So uh, that came about as a result of uh, starting a business and also visiting there as a student and falling in love. I was always in love. I could never leave, ever leave, so, but I did. Is there a man involved in this story somewhere? No, no, no. Really? But in the book, no, I have a wonderful husband. We've been married a very long time. But in the book, I do say, my husband's here, my, my lover's in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one and the same man. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the lines in the book. Well, it's- now, you know, we hear a lot about L.A. being a great uh, town to be in also. Uh, so tell us about the difference between these two uh, kind of iconic cities there. It's hard to, uh, for me, it's almost like saying what they have that's so much alike. Obviously, the age is so different. We're talking about 2,000 years versus 200 years. We're talking about um, cities, uh, you know, Paris is more traditional, you know, more out of the past, in the present, and trying to modernize, becoming more modern, becoming in sync with everything. But L.A. is there. L.A. is the future. It's what's happening. Um, The big difference, of course, is the relaxed lifestyle that we have. And it's not that theirs is a frenetic, hectic lifestyle like we always think of in New York, but it's very, very different. And there is this new love. I mean, Parisians have always loved New York. And, you know, there's this kind of love-hate relationship between New York and L.A. And it's kind of, I was thinking, getting ready for the interview, that it's like 3,000, 6,000, 3,000 miles. We're, you're sort of right smack in the middle of us. Right. You know, Six hours each into way. into New York and then to right. L.A. Right, right. And in, there's so many more similarities between New York and Paris. But at the same time, we are both cities of dreams. We're both cities of style. We're both cities of glamour, luxury, entertainment, culture, cuisine. Um, and so many Parisians, uh, while they love New York, are now dreaming about Paris. And we're having so many Parisians move out here. I guess it's because the entrepreneurial spirit, there's an exhilarating individual feeling of freedom uh, and that anything's possible. But then I have the reverse view that for me anything was possible in Paris. <laughs> Having said that, um, the most important thing um, about the book, it's an art book. It's a travel book also because um, in each of the sections where you're talking about the art and the pairs, there's geolocators on there. So if you punch that in, up comes, you know, on a Google map for you. And that's really cool to travel with, um, you know, if you're going to either city. It's also a book about culture and history and lots of trivia. The narratives at the beginning of each section are informative and interesting, providing insights for the visual pairs that follow, and the art. The art's the best part of the book. You know, uh, when you look back at both cities, if you were going to live in either city, we know we know L.A. is a very expensive city. Does uh, Paris sort of come up to par about the same uh, price either either way? Well, it does now because of the dollar. Paris is a tremendous value because of what's happened in the dollar. You know, it's almost at parity now. And in Paris, when you how walk many, to a restaurant, how the many, tax and the tips already included in there. How many francs to a dollar? Uh, 110, I think it was down to the other day from 114. Okay. And it's, it's not francs anymore, it's euros. It's oh, been that's that right. way since the year 2000. I'm from the old school. How long have you been? Uh, <laughs> I'm using the dial on my phone <laughs> still. <laughs> You're still on the, some of the prices that it's still in francs. Nobody looks at that anymore. Anyway, it's uh, it, it's... There's so many things that are so vibrant about both cities, and as I said, um, it, 
the book offers a level of discovery to see the cities in ways that have never been seen before. Now, when visiting um, Paris, uh, you know, one of the major landmarks there, obviously the Eiffel Tower, how is it when you're going there? Is it usually like a crowd where you need to wait in line? Kind of paint that picture for me. Uh, paint the picture. It is always, always crowded. But what I love most about it is I have a routine. My, my apartment's not very far from there, and the minute I land, I walk up to it and take a picture. And the beauty of it is it's different every time. It can be dark and sparkly. It can be gray, you know, that, that Paris gray. It can be sometimes covered in clouds. It can be against a blue, blue sky with white, white, puffy clouds that are just up there. During Roland Garros, they have a, a, a tennis ball, you know, hanging right from the middle of it. They light it up for special things for October. They had it shining all pink for Breast Cancer Month. Um, people go back over and over and over and over again. It is just this iconic place. And um, this young couple I was with or met on this last trip, they decided to sit down on the bottom and have pizza there. And when I heard that, I thought that was the most absurd thing I'd ever heard that anybody wanted to do at the Eiffel Tower. But I thought, okay, you know, these, this is this new generation that's, how they decided they wanted to do it, picnic at the bottom. So the Eiffel, really, like the art in the book, as I'm thinking about it, is something to ever, it's something different to each person that experiences it's it. It's like artwork. Like the city. The yeah. Like the artwork, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. And um, I just thought about that just as I was speaking with you. Um, you see the throngs of people that come. Sometimes it'll be the first time for them, and they're all in awe. They're all in amazement. They all want selfies now. They all want pictures uh, and then there's people like me that go back every single time. That's my routine. And I have so many different pictures of it, you know, from so many different – but but it's the, the change in the weather, the change in the seasons. Um, and it really shows up because it just stands there alone in the beautiful skyline. Now, do you have children? I do. Now, how, how old are your children? I, I can't tell you that. They oh. Three okay. adult children and six grandchildren. Wow. And so <laughs> when did you start making this, right. tr you know, this trans – Atlantic trip all the time. Uh, when I started the business, when my daughter was about four years old, and the business was importing children's clothes uh, from France, and so that summer uh, I took all the kids over so they could meet all the companies and see what mom was doing, and that went on for a very, very long time. Uh, my husband was very successful and put up with a, a lot <laughs> for me. Still, did the book was way harder than the uh, than the business was. But that's where I had an appreciation for the, um, the perfectionism of the French people and the companies that I worked with. When I walked in a factory there, it was phenomenal. They, doing fashion there is like doing artwork. It's nothing like the factories, you know, that we talk about in L.A. You, you would meet someone there that was doing the embroidery on one of the dresses, and, and she was like this artistic designer. It's very serious. Everything they do is serious. Everything they do is art. And I think that's where I connected. That's what made me feel wonderful. And when I would come back and merchandise the clothes, we sold it that way. We sold them in collections. We sold them. The displays were, you know, taken from beautiful windows that I had looked at. Um, and I went back and back. And I loved the whole design element of the business. And actually, I worked as hard on the book, in the design of the book, if you have the book there, you'll see it's not just, quote, a normal book. Uh, and the whole way of telling my story through art was that. And then came the hard part, the writing part, which uh, I had to use quotes at first to, tell, to use my words for other people before I could use my own words. And the quotes tied the artwork together, and people love that about the book. So it's been, a, it's been interesting how I've sort of, it's a personal journey because my life allowed me the experience to go back and forth and still does. I have a perfect life. What can I say? Well, yeah, did your um, any of your kids uh, pick up the love for either of those two cities? Yeah, yeah, they do. They all, they, well, two of them speak French. Um, they studied French, my two boys. My daughter decided she wanted to speak Spanish, but she does speak French. My daughter is, in the, <laughs> is a writer, and she's also a stylist. Uh, and that's come from her. She's acquired from being there young and going all the time, the, the love of French putting together of things. Um, and, I don't and hear anything about Los Angeles in here. It's all about Paris. <laughs> yeah. ah. Well, you ask me about L.A. <laughs> well, uh, I know a lot about L.A. I live there, okay. actually. Okay, well, L.A. is becoming Paris around palm trees. Okay. There you go. 
It really, really, really You know, is. to me, it was very stereotypical. Uh, I just found, and I had to get back to New York after a short while. Uh -huh. I, there are certain parts of California that are absolutely smashing. But mm -hmm. L.A. itself, I just find is, you know, what you see is what you get. That's That was my gut feeling when I was living there for a it's while. True. Yeah. Well, it's good true. stuff. Well, um, I, We're much more superficial where Paris is deep. Uh, we're much larger and much more spread out where Paris is compact. You're used to that because you're in New York. Um, we're a culture. We're a car culture. He and hello, Frank. I see that you love cars. You're all involved <laughs> oh, with your cars. Yeah. Yep, that's she for sure. did her homework. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that's what the Parisians love. They love cars. They love beautiful but women. But they don't love Mopars. But they like they Peugeots. Love <laughs> love yeah. Not, not Torinos. <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, Citrions. LA's natural beauty. We have gorgeous beaches. We have beautiful mountains. It's one of the few cities in the world where within an hour, an hour and a half, you can be from the beach and be skiing in the mountains. You know, our, our weather, oh, my God, you know, what's going to be 88 today? And I looked, and you and Paris are going to be, I don't know, 50s, 60s. Um, and we have sunshine, you know, two-thirds of the year. Maybe more than yeah, that. Yeah, but we don't get earthquakes and mudslides and <laughs> fires, <laughs> and, and we don't have an Andreas Fault. <laughs> we'll take that. Well, Paris doesn't we'll take have the that. winter. It's, it's true. It's true. But Paris, you know, every every city has its its geologic issues. You know, you get hurricanes. Um, Paris gets flooding if there's too much rain. Everybody has something, and those are things we can't control. But um, our day-to-day -day life here is wonderful. There is a free, independent spirit. It is very relaxed. Um, our neighborhoods, uh, there, there's a rejuvenation of downtown, by the way. I don't know if you guys have been out here. And we're becoming much more urban. That's one of the things that I have seen happen. It's really interesting. In the beginning, you know, they created a car society out here. It wasn't always like that. And now the suburbs are pulling back and they're rejuvenating our downtown and everybody, all the young people want to live downtown. All the property that's near downtown is just, that's where all the expensive homes are now. It's really, really interesting to see this change. And um, I don't know if you know this, I, don't, I never I didn't study in New York how many museums you have there. There's over 850 museums in Los Angeles. Gallery. That is quite a large amount. Well, that's and obviously that's a big thing for you too because you're trying to, um, you know, you you tie it in with the art and everything else. Give us the title of the book once again, if you would, Diane, and where we can get it. Parquois Paris. Nick Liu did the L.A. art, and Eric Juriat did uh, the art from Paris. But they each did their own. They each did pairs, and my artists are absolutely fantastic. Um, we have a website, and the art's for sale actually on Big Cartel and Etsy. If, if people look under YLA pour cooperate. All right. So, and also we have a local bookstore here, Ye Old Warwick Bookshop. You'll be able to pick up. Oh, I hope they have it. They'll I, get it. Ever tells me, but they can always order the book from Baker and Taylor or Ingram, not Ingram, but um, SCB distributors uh, are handling the book. It's it's available. And the e-book's fabulous to travel with. But you guys, you know, in New York, you go to both cities. So it would really be fun, and then this becomes like a memory book for you because every time you look at the art, you see something different. All right. So, uh, well, thanks for coming on the air with us, Diane. Best of luck with air. Keep traveling Thank and uh, building those memories. Thank you. You too. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. There you go, Diane Radikin and the book, Why L.A.? And what's the other word? Pourquoi. Pourquoi. Means why en français. Oh, that's almost like uh, Spanish, which yeah. is pourquoi. Yeah, exactly, because those are the Romance languages. Which is like butter, parquet. <laughs> it's butter.